3D printers can make very complex objects. They can produce objects that are not possible with other production methods. Despite their remarkable ability, they have limitations to their printing capabilities. We can expand a printer's capabilities to print more objects successfully by using a technique known as support material. Every printer design is different, and therefore their limitations also vary. We use FDM printers in our lab. FDM stands for Fused Deposition Modeling. To understand why some 3D prints need support and some don't, we need to understand a bit about how a FDM printer works. An FDM printer has a few major systems. The first system is the filament. Our FDM printers have a spool of filament. Filament is a plastic that can be melted without damage to it and is extruded in a small diameter which is flexible enough to be rolled up for storage and dispensing. The second major system is the extruder. The extruder in its simplest form is a motor to move the filament to the hot end and a hot end. The hot end is a small chamber that heats the filament up and a nozzle which controls the size of the plastic that squirts out. A common size nozzle for an FDM printer is 0.4 millimeters, which is about the size of a grain in sand or eight human hairs. The final important part of an extruder is the part cooling fan. This helps to rapidly cool the plastic after it has been extruded. The third major system is the movement system. This uses stepper motors, which are motors that can move in very precise directions. The stepper motors move the hot end around and allow it to squirt plastic where it needs to go. These three systems work together with a computer controller, power delivery system, and some sensors to create a 3D printer. It is important to remember that a 3D printer doesn't know that it's a 3D printer. It simply follows instructions and will see the creation of those instructions when we start slicing models. Let's look at a hot glue gun and make some comparisons. A hot glue gun has filament. That is a glue stick. It has an extruder. The trigger moves the glue stick to the heated chamber and then out through the nozzle. The movement system for the hot glue gun is my body. As I use the hot glue gun, it squirts out a heated glue stick. Then, over time, this cools. It is important for a 3D print that as a 3D printer lays down one layer on top of the previous layer, that there is enough heat in the plastic to partially remelt the layer below. This is why layers stick together. However, as you can see with my hot glue gun, there is too much heat that the layers not only melt into the layer below, but there is so much heat in that the layer below doesn't maintain its original shape. Notice that when I try to print in thin air, the glue falls down. With enough cooling, I could reduce that so it might hold its form, but then it might not have enough heat so that it melts the layer below and sticks to it. At this point, a fair question would be, if 3D printers have the ability to use support material, why would we want to avoid using it? Removing the support material is an extra step before the part is finished. Support material has to touch the print to be useful, so it means that it can leave blemishes on your part. Removing these blemishes may be yet another step before your part is complete. Support material is useful while a part is being printed, but as soon as that part is done, the support material is trash. If we can print without support material, we can reduce the waste. Another benefit to avoiding support material is faster print times. Anytime the printer is printing the disposable support material, that is an additional time added before your part is done. If this character could have printed successfully without support material, it would have cut the total print time in half. Mind the gap. If you want to 3D print a fully assembled moving part, it is important to leave space between the surfaces of your part. In my example here, I have left a gap between the inside cylinder and the part that will encircle it. If there were no gap, then the parts would be printed together and be unable to move. Support material is designed to fill gaps and support parts being printed. Our slicing software doesn't know that we want a part to move, so it'll happily fill it in. If we can't reach inside to remove the support material, then the part will be fused together. The size that the gap needs to be is dependent on a printer's ability and the orientation of the part on the printer. The bigger the gap, the more slop there will be in the finished part. If you have a gap that is too small, the part will fuse together. It's more of a guideline than an actual rule. As we saw with the hot glue gun, printing into open space is challenging. 
In 3D printing, we call this overhangs. I've printed an overhanging test piece so we can see what this printer is capable of printing. We can see that 90 degrees prints with no problem. We can also see that if we keep our overhangs below 50 degrees, this printer can do a pretty good job. That is because this printer isn't really printing into empty space totally unsupported. It's only going a little bit beyond the previous layer. It's like stacking books so that they keep extending out further. Each book is a single layer. As long as you don't get too greedy, they won't fall down. When the printer gets to more extreme overhangs, we can see where some of the filament has fallen down and left little strings. This is called stringing. In specific circumstances, FDM printers can print into open space. We call that bridging. To understand bridging, let's look at a couple example parts. To get a close look at these, we're going to check out slicing software. Slicing software is a tool that takes 3D models and turns it into a series of directions that a 3D printer can understand. It does this by slicing the model into a bunch of flat cross sections and then makes a plan for how to fill those in. We can interact with the slicer and see exactly what instructions the printer is going to receive. When the printer prints the letter H, it has no problems with the legs. Those have no overhangs and so layers are stacked upon one another. When it gets to the middle of the H, the printer is printing out into thin air, but when it reaches the other side, the plastic will connect with the other leg. It has built a bridge, hence the name bridging. Let's contrast that with the letter T. When the printer prints the letter T, it again has no problems with the leg. There are no overhanging layers, so it simply stacks one layer upon another. However, when it gets to the top of the T, the first layer overhangs a lot, and while it might survive printing away from the leg, it has nothing to connect to, and when the printer starts moving back, it is going to droop down, possibly leading to a failed print. Does that mean we will never be able to print a shape like the letter T? We can, if we're clever. We can save ourselves a lot of trouble if we remember that we can change the orientation of a part being printed. By laying this T down, suddenly there are no overhangs. This T will print no problem now. Many parts would, that would be impossible to print without support material are just rotation away from easy printing. However, we can only use this to our advantage in one direction, so some careful planning is needed to make sure that rotating our part doesn't suddenly make impossible overhangs in a different area of our print. In conclusion, creating 3D models that don't need support material results in 3D prints that generate less waste, print faster, and have less manual post-processing before they are ready. Not needing support material also opens the possibility of printing moving parts that pop off the printer fully assembled.